updated the h t twenty this is a temperature humidity sensor one of my favorites low cost easy to use i squared c now comes with a p t if you filter on it so it'll survive more interactions with dirt and grime and moisture without it affecting the internal capacitive sensor so moisture like the air passes through but gunk and water does not okay that's nice good update nice update same place um you get these really cool uh slim panel mount cables i like these because they're so like skinny they're basically a half i think it's like a half inch diameter hole you drill a hole in your material you plug it in and now you've got a usb-c cable with an extension you plug in usb-c into the other end uh and there's a little cap even that goes on top to protect it so um inexpensive and very small so even your smallest project can use a panel mount usb-c connector next up we also have a panel mount slim USB cable with micro B. So there's still a couple devices out there that use micro B, like your, your Pico 2 and um, other you know, microcontroller boards or other devices. Uh, so again, very slim, um, small hole needed. Uh, you just drill a round hole and then you put the nut over it and uh, it's nice and flush and clean and it comes with a cap so it's easy to make a panel mount cable for um, your micro B. Next up, we have the Pi 500 that came in. I think we sold out, but we're going to get some more. Yeah. This is an update to the Pi 400, but of course with the Pi 5 chip. So it's like a big update, um, much faster processor, um, you know, excellent USB support, Ethernet. Everything's really fast with that new RP1 um, coprocessor chip. Uh, so it's like a big boost and uh, came at the same price as the Pi 400. So the Pi 400 has dropped its price. It still doesn't have a microphone, but it does have two uh, 4K HDMI outputs. Nice. And some USB 3s. All right, next up, more Pi stuff. Mm, more Pi stuff. We also have the new Pi monitor. It's a great pairing for that Pi 500. It's a 15.6 inch color IPS TFT monitor with a, like a little kickstand in the back. You power it from USB-C, so it's easy to power from the Pi or your Pi 500 or from a USB adapter. And it has, um, you know, HDMI has video and audio in it. So you can, there's little speakers built into the front or you can use headphones. Um, so like solution for how to get audio out of your Pi 500. But here's the thing, you can use it with other stuff too. It does not have to be used just by yeah. Pi. It's manufactured by Pi um, to their standards, but it's like a generic, monitor and it's nice and fly you can take it with you it's like if you want to have a portable monitor yeah um, good it's a good idea next up um we also got some of those official raspberry pi ssds in now in half a terabyte and bme these are designed you know, specifically for use with the raspberry pi um pi 5 we're using an uh, m2 or nvme add-on or hat you don't have to use these like Pretty much any NVMe will work, um, but these are the official supported ones. They're nice and fast and they're low cost. So uh, if you want kind of a guaranteed known to work at a reasonable price, um, you could pick up one of these. Next up. Next up, we've got a cute 3D printed case for a popular board. The product is called the Universal USB DC Solar Charger, also known as product number 477. Five or four seven five five either one um i thought it'd be nice to have some 3d printed case for uh charger boards especially since often you know these are integrated into another enclosure plug in your lipo battery plug in a solar cell and it will like magically work it'll charge up over solar you can also plug in usb it'll charge over usb um, and then you just get the output voltage on the other jst pin uh, and that comes with a little snap fit case um, that's 3D printed and low cost, so you can protect your board for um, projects that need to uh, not get dirty, especially if you're doing solar stuff and you're outside. All right, these are cool. Uh, next up, we've got some festive holiday themed, if unicorns and skulls are your holidays, uh, LED filaments. These are, they're kind of used in novelty bulbs, but it's nice to just have the individual um, LED filaments. So they're basically very, very, very thin PCBs and they have um, chip on boards, so like very tiny LED diodes that are uh, pick and placed on and then it's covered with this like yellow um, diffuser epoxy stuff. 
Um, they come in three different designs. We're working on getting some more. Uh, unicorn, who doesn't love unicorns? Skulls, who doesn't skulls. love skulls? Yeah, see and uh, you see the sizes. Unicorn, snow. Snowflake. Yeah, and the snowflake. And then yeah. we have that one image that shows you like about the size. The skull is like kind of big. Um, one nice thing about them is, well, I mean, I can show a quick demo. Is um, this is very bright. Um, it is bright on both sides, but the back is a little dimmer because the LEDs, it's on like a very, very thin PCB. The LEDs do shine through the back because they're just like bonded on, um, but it is brighter on one side. It's like maybe like 30% dimmer, um, but they're really easy to use. They're just LEDs. So in this yeah. case, I just have like a resistor on this breadboard and I'm powering it from you know, three volts or five It looks like you can have them blink on and off and stuff like you that. You just treat it like an LED. Yeah. So you can PWM them, and you can you know control them with constant current drivers, whatever. I think just add a resistor to limit it to you know 50 or 100 milliamps is your yeah. best bet. It's cool. Um, yeah, it's not gonna really, but it's like, it's a like cute and fun. They look great. Yeah, they're just like, it's adorable. Can you do the skull? Could you plug in the skull? Yeah, I can just plug in the skull. Plug in the skull. Plug in the skull. Oh, okay, skull. 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 Okay, yeah. that's nice. Yeah. You can do a lot of neat things with this. Yeah. Okay, cool. A lot of neat skulls. Yeah. Uh, they do draw a significant amount of current, though, because each one of these little dots, which you can barely see, yeah. is an LED. Yeah, they look good. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, like from you know, a few inches away, they kind of diffuse into each other. Um, but you do need, like, the skulls, particularly, I think you need like 200 milliamps. This one may be 50. It's like a and tiny this one may be 100. Cool. Yeah. Okay. You put this on your like baseball cap. And you'll All be like, I'm right. Scoring. Next uh, star of the show tonight, besides you, Lady Ada, our team, our customers, the entire community of people who share all the things to bring people together is. Da -da! It's a spinning motor connected to a motor driver chip. Um, so we've had motor drivers before that were just like plain H bridges, but. Uh, some people were asked us to carry stepper motor driver chips. So these are specifically designed for bipolar steppers. Um, they make it really easy because they do the micro stepping support for you. And some of them even have like, uh, you know, debug signaling or you, UART control. Um, this one is the first one. It's kind of the, the most popular and simplest. It's called the Allegro A4988. It can drive up to two amps of current into uh, eight volt to 35 volt bipolar DC motor and you can get like little breakout boards from Pololu. They make these little tiny breakout boards that are used in a lot of 3D printers and CNC machines um, that they just plug in and you could replace them when, when they get damaged or they blow. But I thought, you know, and I don't want to make that exact thing because like that exists. So I thought um, like you can get a 4988 breakouts for super cheap anywhere. I want to get a really good breakout that's easy for people to use. Um, that has like labeled pins and terminal blocks and a really easy to use potentiometer and LEDs to help you know what's going on, mounting holes. So it's like bigger than those little breakouts, but I think it's better because it's got, yeah. it's, it makes it easier for you to get started on the off chance that you're trying to build something new, not just using an existing like 3D printer. Yeah, basically. you might not blow something up because you have more understanding and control. Can... Yeah, and you can put like a, a heat sink on. It doesn't come with a heat sink, but I'm just showing yeah, here's how you would yeah, do a heat sink if you wanted to. Yeah. Um, it's two ounce copper, so it's designed for a good amount of uh, current draw. And then we put it uh, electrolyte, like electrolytic uh, capacitor on there, um, just kind of help smooth out the motor power. Um, one thing that I thought was neat, which you can't see in the demo quite well, but you can see on the overhead, is I added. Um, debug state LEDs, which I thought was useful. So the direction is either red or green. So as it spins forward or back, yeah. the, you know, the LED tells you that it's getting signal and then you can kind of barely see it, but this has a yellow LED that also pulses whenever you do a step. So this stepper driver can do um, one, four, eight or 16 micro steps per step using the MS pins. By default, it's 16 micro steps. So um, you, know, you can see it's going kind of slow, but if I want on the fly, you can change 
the micro steps either by connecting the MS pin to GPIO or in this case I just connected it up and now you're seeing it's like it's flying it's going really fast because it's now doing one step per step in, or one quarter micro step instead of one sixteenth so if you want to go fast you use the less precise but bigger steps and then if you want precision you go down to the um, one sixteenth micro steps and you can do like very precision motion um, so this is what you know people use for their CNC's and 3D printers when they you want to move quickly somewhere you do big steps and then when you actually want to do the little cuts or the extrusion you use the small steps so um, it's already going I like the terminal blocks you just yeah. plug in your wires and then you have your motor power and then your DC control here so you can have a bunch That's of them nice. very easy to use and then you know you want more current just twist this pot with any uh, flathead screwdriver and that is new products